Hello, Wilmington. I am Justin Wright, your Democratic candidate for mayor of the city of Wilmington, offering a new generation of leadership where we will put neighbor back in neighborhood. We will restore the public trust. We will bridge the gap from city hall to your front door. I need your help. I need your vote. I need your support. Justin Wright, your Democratic candidate for mayor of the city of Wilmington. We are Wilmington. Welcome to Ease on Fair Baptist Church. Stay tuned for today's previously recorded message. May this recording be a blessing to your life. Welcome to Ease I Am Fair. Thanks for tuning in. Check out this week's scoop. Is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you, cause he's able. How many know that God is able to do it? Whatever you want, whatever you need, God is able to do it. He will come through. He will provide. He will make a way because he's able. Oh, God is, God is able to do just what he said, just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill, he's going to fulfill every promise, every promise to you. He's able. 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 He's able.
pick you up, turn it around, place your feet on a solid ground. He will provide all you need according to riches in glory. Don't be worried, don't be stressed out. He's never, never failed you yet. I've never seen you righteous forsaken. On you, don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you, cause He's able. Hallelujah. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. This is Pastor Curry, pastor of the Ezai and Fair Baptist Church, and we greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. I just want to remind all of my Ezai and Fair Church family, as well as those who are visitors and friends, that we have three powerful services every Sunday, starting at 5 a.m. There's a call-in teleconference when we, could, we meditate on the Word of God, and we spend time in prayer, showing the devil that we will sacrifice, get up and over two to three hundred people are on that call then we are still doing our drive-ins it starts at 9 a.m listen the praise teams have been blessing the lord blessing us and the people of god have been blessed healed and delivered every sunday at 9 a.m we have a drive-in as well as at the 11 30 hour there's a drive-in saints of god you are missing a treat do not allow COVID to scare you do not allow COVID to cause you to become a couch potato saints I look forward to seeing you I'm excited I'm excited but I'm saddened because I have not seen you please show up this week at the 11 30 or the 9 a.m. Well, Pastor, are you saying people have not been showing up? Nah, if you're watching Facebook, we get a parking lot full every week. But I don't want you to become a couch potato. Some of you are out in my mind, I have not seen. I need to see you. 
please show up this Sunday at 9 a.m. or 11.30. I will come forward to seeing you in church. God bless you. Let us pray. Oh God, our Father, we thank you now. We thank you, God, for the testimony of the song. You won't give up on us. So we should not give up on you. You'll hold us when we're hurting. You'll be our friend when our friends have walked away. When trouble arises, you'll be a bridge over the trouble. So, Father, I pray today that you would keep us with a steadfast mind to bless you despite of whatever come our way. Now, God, as we stand behind the sacred desk to declare the word of God to the people of God, we pray, God, you will be with us. Stand with us, God, and hold us and meet the needs of your people. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Today we start a new series and we're going to be exploring the book of Philippians. While we will only read one verse this morning, please note I will refer for, to the whole first chapter of the book of Philippians today. Amen. In the book of Philippians chapter, chapter 1 verse 27, very powerful statement that Paul is making. Listen to what he says. Whatever happens whatever happens and I might not preach so I want to make sure you get the message in the front end whatever hap whatever means whatever it, it means when you're happy and when you're sad when you have when, when, when things are going well in your life and when things are falling apart whatever happens conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ I don't care what life throw at me I'm going to stand strong in my faith trusting that if God brought me to it he shall anybody anybody in here today ever ever in your life went through something and you didn't know how you were going to come out but you came out that's the whole message today i want to make sure that you put that in your spirit that no matter what happens i'm gonna bless the lord i have tears in my eyes but i'm gonna bless the lord i may have to walk away from some people but i'm still gonna bless the lord hallelujah philippians 1 and 27 says again whatever happens Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Today, just for a few moments, I want to talk from this thought. No matter what happens. Come on, look at your neighbor real quickly and say, neighbor, no matter what happens. Come on, look at somebody else and say, no matter what happens. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. One of the most common mistakes that we all make is we fall into the trap of when and then thinking. In other words, we psychologically believe when certain things happen in our lives, then we'll be able to accomplish certain things. For instance, we'll say, when I get married, then my moral life will be right. When I hit the lottery, then I'll be debt free. When I get a good paying job, then I'll pay my tithes. When my dilemma is over, then I will have peace of mind but the reality of the matter brother chairman is when and then theories are for the mentally incompetent the delusionally deranged and the intellectual ignorant 
Y'all ain't like none of that. Okay. In fact, nothing can result a positive no matter what lifestyle other than God. Look at your neighbor and say God. Because every element of the human existence, except for God, subtracts from our lives. And I call these human elements joy blockers. Somebody say joy blockers. Because, because they work consistently to keep us off balance one of the joy blockers is pain it, it's hard to have joy and be balanced while in pain and it doesn't matter whether the pain is personal or public like the terrorist attacks that are happening around the world it's hard to experience pain and joy all at the same time another joy blocker is people somebody say people people can make um, happiness very very difficult because people can do both inspire and irritate you oh y'all act like I'm by myself today uh-huh uh-huh uh -huh. they can make it difficult for you because people can be delightful and they can be uh, what I call demanding they could be wonderful and they can be worrisome there's a third joy blocker and it's it's pressure somebody say pressure uh, too much pressure can siphon your joy and suffocate your happiness and it and it doesn't matter if the pressure is internal or external if you have too much of it it can hamper your ability to be happy the the the, the fourth one the fourth joy blocker is problems somebody say problems problems can invade you your your stability and destroy your joy whether the problems are financial whether they are relational whether they are political whether they are educational or emotional problems have the capacity to eclipse our enthusiasm and quartel our commitment not just in our faith but in our family and as we tune into the text for today Paul knew what it was to encounter and overcome all four of these joy blockers and live a balanced life of joy no matter what hit his life before I go too far remember this so you will understand the context of our text for today Paul was in prison when he wrote this epistle in fact by the time of this particular text he had already spent two years in Caesarea in jail on false charges he had already been extradited to Rome and shipwrecked on the Mediterranean Sea he had already been extradited well shall I say been been, been uh, uh, stranded on a small island called Melita and bitten by a poisonous snake this man and Paul my brothers and sisters had every reason to be bitter distressed despondent as well as discouraged yet he could not find himself succumbing to the things that God was trying to take him to because of the fact that he recognized that no matter what happens in my life I'm going to pursue and do what God has called me to do I just wonder to Today, if there's anybody in here today who understands that God has called you to a higher plane in him he has called you to something bigger than where you currently are but there are joy blockers joy blockers who do everything in their power to keep you off balance and God sent me to tell you that you gotta tell your joy blockers to get behind 
behind you because where God is trying to take you, no demon in hell can stop you. Oh, I ain't going to get no help in here. You see, we confuse the enemy when we decide I'm going to follow God's plan instead of mine. Because life will push you in places that you didn't intend to go. There are times you will be on the right track and life will put you on the wrong track. But at the end of the day, you have to make up your mind even if I messed up. Look at somebody and say, even if I messed up. Even if I messed up, God still has a plan for my life. Can I get a witness up in here? Because, because here's the truth. The devil don't want you to know this, but the truth is if you're still here, it means God is still working on you. Oh, this is hard to preach today. It, God is still working on you, which means, yes, people are whispering behind your back. Yes, people are waiting for you to fall down. But look at the fact you are still here. You might be a work in progress. Things may not be going as you planned, but I came to laugh at the devil. I'm still here. Look at somebody and say, I'm still here. Paul, Paul could have been bitter, but he chose to live his life balanced with the Lord. He chose not to succumb to the trickery of the enemy, but to keep his focus and not let his discouragement take him off course. So here's the question. How do we maintain a balanced life no matter what happens? Brother Chairman, I got a couple and we're going to be out of here. First, by having the right outlook. Look at somebody and say, have the right outlook. Life is all about our perception. One writer said, Two men looked out the same prison bars. One saw mud and the other saw stars. Life is all about what we're seeing while we're looking. And therefore, we must train ourselves to look at every situation that hits our lives that, 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 like, with, from a divine perspective. Which means we've got to enlarge our perspective. We can't be crybabies if we're going to go where God is trying to take us. Because balanced people always have a bigger world view and a larger perspective in life. If, if our view of our circumstance is too narrow and constricted, then we will always be disheartened, frustrated, and unhappy. You need to ask yourself, why are you so stressed out? You're stressed out because you're looking out of the wrong eyes from which you're going through today. But we've got to continuously ask ourselves how does God see my dilemma how does God see my tragedy because no matter what's going on in our lives whether it's the good the bad or the ugly God has already taken our left and made it right y'all didn't like didn't understand that he's already taken your left your mess ups your your bad decisions and made it right in other words god has already incorporated our mistakes into his miracles which means god is working for us despite of our sins and our shortcomings and god can work in other people Hear me somebody, God can work in other people, with other people, through other people. And if need be for some of you who are dependent upon people, God can work around and despite 
other people in order to carry out his purpose for your life. That's what Paul realized in verse 12. In verse 12 of this text when he said, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that everything that happened to me has helped to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Ever since Paul was converted, he had only one dream, which was to preach the gospel in the city of Rome. Because Rome was at that time the most powerful and prestigious city in the world. Perhaps Paul envisioned himself preaching to a massive crowd, but God had another plan for Paul. Paul's plan was to go to Rome as a preacher, but God's plan was to send him there as a prisoner. I hope you're building it with me today. And yet, in two years of time, while he didn't get to preach at the big Colosseum, God did give him a captive audience in Caesar's prison. You see, you go through hell all the time and you always have your head down, but your plans may not be God's plans, but at the end of the day, God's plan will come forward. Can I get a witness in here? And where did Paul's results end up? Chapter 4 of this same book reveals that within that two year span, even some of Nero's own family had become believers of Jesus Christ. And Paul also, and this is what I love the most, he also wrote much of what we now call the New Testament. While in jail, instead of complaining about who didn't put money on his books, he decided to write book after book. Can I get a witness in here today? Brother Pastor, what do you mean he decided to write books? Well, we call them Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Timothy, and Thessalonians. While he was locked up in jail, he wanted to be out there preaching in the Colosseum, but God said, I need you in the jailhouse because there are going to be some people Let me encourage you today to say to God, I need you to enlarge my outlook. I need you to expand my viewpoint and help me to see my problems through my faith. Whatever comes, whatever comes, God is still in charge. I told him at my aunt's funeral yesterday and I'll tell you today, God's business is his business. My business is to trust him and never doubt. And as long as you're doing your business, God will do his business. And I know I got somebody in here today who can testify that when I was minding my business, God was minding his business and God made a way out of nowhere. Way. Look, look, I, I, I want to, I wanna, before I go to my next point, I want to say this just to say it, and then I'm going to move on. I'm not going to build it, but I just want to say this. God permits unfavorable situations so they can boost. See, I was getting ready to go to my second point, but I need to put this in your spirit because what you're doing and what you're going through ain't all about you. You know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna do me. It ain't all about you. Look, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. This, 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 this blew my mind. I was on the plane and, and this came to me. He talks about a being a, a booster and, 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 and God wants you to know that, 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 this thing that's happening in your life is going to boost somebody to go to where God is. See, somebody is looking at you and, and they're looking at you and they're saying, how in the world is she able to stand? And, and, and you're still standing and, and, and they're wondering why is she serving and why 
is he serving when 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 all i know that's going on it ain't about me baby it's about a testimony and i'm a man of a testimony i know in my own strength i will be sleeping in my grave but i'm so glad today that god has me still standing because he wants you to know what you going through is only for a moment but when he come through you will be able to get your dance back you'll be able to get your shout back look look but there was another part of that there was another part of that look at this it says not only so I got this on the plane y'all while I was on the plane last night not only will it boost somebody to believe the Lord to trust the Lord to depend on the Lord they looking at you yeah it might be your mother it might be your father it might be your friend but they're looking at you and if you make it through it they know they can make it too but check this out y'all not only is it a booster but it also will bless you to be able to get what you lacking have you ever paid attention that some of the stuff you going through it gets on your last nerve have you ever paid attention that you keep going in the same circle I got an answer for you God said I'm doing it so that I can bless you to have what you need to get where you're going you may think because I go to church that's good enough but God told me to tell you I'm letting you go go through it because I'm blessing you with some more strength I'm blessing you with some more power I'm blessing you to be able to look the devil right in the eye and say devil get behind me wait a minute wait a minute let me get to my next point my next point because but chairman i ain't go to gym this week <laughs> but thank you even though i've been trying to slow him down but thank you look not only do we maintain balance in our lives by having the right outlook now i'm gonna teach on this one but also by taking ownership of our attitude Thanks, three or four of you who, who helped me right there. Taking ownership. Come on, let's look at your neighbor and say, here, here you go again. <laughs> take ownership. Tell your neighbor, take ownership of your attitude. Never let others control your attitude. In other words, don't allow others to control your mood <laughs> I was all right until she walked in <laughs> your manners your motives your methods or your message if you bless the Lord I don't care what they do to you you keep blessing the Lord do I have a witness in here but control your attitude in this first chapter of Philippians Paul focused on the complexity of the four different kinds of people that were in his life and he showed us how to deal with each of them he said I had critics who were slandering me and creating all types of controversy about me Paul said I had comrades who were standing with me and praying for me he said I had competitors who were preaching Christ out of rivalry he said I had conspirators who were hanging around just to keep stuff stirred up boy if I was totally Pentecostal I would stay right there 
but I got to move on. But the final analysis was he maintained his balance and kept his joy. In verse 15, he focused on his critics. He said it's true that some preach Christ because they are jealous and quarrelsome. That word quarrelsome in the Greek word me is aris which simply means they love to argue and create controversy do you know anybody like that they just love to keep stuff stirred up and please note that Paul ascribed their motive as jealousy look at your neighbor and say jealousy I need to stay there because most of the people who are criticizing you are just jealous of you I should have had more amen ends right there most of the all y'all can talk about me all you want but I came to understand that a couple years ago most of the people who are criticizing you are just jealous of you come on high five your neighbor and say get up off of me yeah 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 they 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 deeply respect you because they secretly want to be you while at a deep level all of us want to be loved and all of us want to be acknowledged and all of us want to be appreciated but the real reality is we don't need people in order to get to where God is taking us you ought to tell somebody you can talk about me as much as you please it's not going to stop where I'm on my way to in verse 16 how much time I got I got five minutes in verse 16 he moves beyond his critics to his comrades he said others preach Christ from a genuine goodwill so they so so they do so out of love and they know that God has given me the work of defending the gospel God will always send people in your life to support you I don't care about the naysayers he's gonna always send genuine people in your life who's gonna embrace you who's gonna defend you and who's gonna speak up on your behalf it may not be the people who you had in mind because some of us have been hurt by but trusting people believing they had our back but when we went out on the edge they left us to die but I'm so glad before we go over God has a friend who can pull you back in do I have a witness verse 17 he moves beyond can I finish teaching this brother chairman he moves beyond his, his his critics and his comrades and then he talks about his competitors he said others preach Christ sincerely from the spirit of selfish ambition <laughs> selfishly ambitious people are ego driven they are compelled to put others down while they lift themselves up but don't let them take you off your balance because people who need to compete are just insecure about who they are and insecure people will compete over any and everything they'll compete with you over the grass color at your house they'll compete with you over the car that you drive they'll compete with you over over the texture of your weave they just will compete with you but don't 
don't let others control your attitude because your only competition is what you were yesterday don't worry about what they're doing to you today your competition is who you were yesterday in other words you should be competing with yourself to be a better version of yourself today than you were on yesterday and once you realize that you have the courage to be a better you then you won't let people pull you off course you won't let people try to compete and then you go and compete you can buy a bigger house you can buy more clothes you can have all those children at the end of the day I've learned how to be content with what God has given me that has to be your spirit I am content I may not have everything that others have but I got peace of mind I got joy He moves on. He moves on from the critics, the comrades, and the competitors to the conspirators who wanted to make things worse for him. He said this in the text. Other people just want to stir up more trouble for him listen to what he calls them in the message translation he calls them crazy makers <laughs> ask your neighbor you know any crazy makers they have no peace they have no joy so they want you to have no peace and no joy the favorite weapon hear me somebody that's why i'm not hollering right now because I want to make sure you get it even though I'm tired but listen to this the weapon the favorite weapon of a crazy maker is gossip gossip in the church they'll say yo girl I need you to pray with me I just heard and they start tearing people down watch the gossipers don't let them come in your circle because they talking about somebody else today but when you are going through they gonna be talking about you watch the crazy makers and Paul said he said very clearly I had to live through all of those people but I came to a conclusion I'm gonna own my own my own attitude I'm not gonna let people take from me what God has for me so I'm gonna control how I think I'm gonna control how I work it out because people are waiting for you to mess up so they can tell you I told you so but the devil is a liar you can gossip you can talk yes I made mistakes yes I did some stuff that wasn't so kosher but at the end of the day I'm still here and that's a word for somebody in here you still here even though if time would have had its way with you you would be in jail but you're still here which tells me that God is not through blessing you yet and here's my last point here's my last point not only do we maintain balance in our lives by having the right outlook and taking ownership of our attitude but here's the last one but also by exploring your options come on look at your neighbor and say explore your options you only have 
Let me narrow it down for you. Two options. Sister Sharif, you only have two options. While going through your pain and your problems, you only had two. Brother Elijah, two. Some of y'all think y'all got 20. You only got two. Worship or worry. When something hits you, you either break out into worship or you can stress out and worry. If you worship more, you'll worry less. <laughs> too many people in the church pop too many pills. Their head always hurting. Don't know what to do. I need Tylenol. I need bear ass. ass. I, I, I don't know what to do. Because you have chosen the wrong option. You can't stop nothing that's coming at you. If it's going to hit you, it's going to hit you. If the doctor says you're terminally ill, why worry about it? Why don't you break out into praise and to say to live is Christ. To die is gain. We always talk about we want to go to heaven, but none of us want to die to get there. But I made up in my mind, I'm going to start worshiping right in the face of the enemy. Every time he comes at me, I'm going to let him know I'm a worshiper. I can worship through my tears. I can worship through my hurt. I can worship through my pain. I can worship through their laughter. I can worship through my guilt. I can worship. You can take everything, but you can't take my worship. So when things are falling apart, trust God to pull it back together. When things happen that don't make any sense, trust God to reveal his plan. Paul says, as we close the text, in the 19th verse, I will continue to rejoice. Come here, Paul. Why did you say it? He said, after all, the hell I've been through. I've been shipwrecked. I've been laughed at. I've been bit by a snake. And I shook it off. But one thing I didn't give up is my praise. And I want to say to somebody in here, your praise speaks to your faith. I know you wouldn't gonna like that. If you worried about it, that means you don't trust God about it. I got people right in this church who was facing foreclosure and they sat down with me. I ain't have no magic words. I said, trust God to reveal his plan. If you lose the house, God's got something else because David said, I once was young, but now I'm old, but I'll never seen the righteous forsaken. You gotta trust God that he's gonna work it out. Why should you stress when you know the God that has all power in his hand? Why should you let the devil win? You gotta learn how to put a praise on it and let the devil know I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. I will make a boast in the Lord because he's good.
Everybody standing. Hey, this is Pastor Curry, pastor of the Isaiah Fair Baptist Church, Wilmington's most exciting church, the church that loves you and ain't a thing you can do about it. Don't forget today at 11 a.m. we're going to have our coffee with Dr. Curry. This is an opportunity for you to hear and see some of the politicians, some of the civic and some of our church members as we interview them and have a cup of coffee. It is an exhilarating time. And this week we got some very special guests that we want to interview introduced to you. So I hope that you will grab a cup of coffee around the 11 a.m. hour today and let's spend some time together uh, trying to hear what others have to say. It's going to be great. Please join me today at 11 a.m. as we do coffee with Dr. Curry and let's get after it. This is Justin Wright, your Democratic candidate for mayor of the city of Wilmington. Wanted to take a few moments uh, just to speak with you today, uh, just to make an appeal, just to kind of share information with you. Uh, when we think about the candidacy for mayor of the city of Wilmington, one may say, well, what qualifies him to run? Uh, well, uh, if you want to take education, uh, I have an associate's degree as well as a bachelor's in business management. Um, so that shows education. A lot of people will question, oh, well, does he have any education? Yes, we have that. Check that off the list. Uh, when we talk about experience, uh, served on Wilmington City Council for eight years as an at-large member of city council. Uh, we've had the ability to uh, govern our city legislatively to effect change via legislation. Uh, so that uh, makes me uniquely qualified because no other uh, candidate has that experience or, or, or knowledge base. Uh, and Wilmington has had a history, if you go back even to Mayor uh, Frawley, uh, Mayor Seals, a number of different mayors, Baker, uh, who had the legislative experience and then that allowed to propel them uh, into understanding our city, uh, into making sure that we made uh, decisions that were impactful for the entire city and not just for certain areas of our city. So it, it begs the question and shows that there is success in mayors that have had the legislative experience from a council standpoint to understand how city government works from that side and then take those same uh, knowledge base, those same goals, those same visions, those same uh, plans and translate them into the mayor's office to make and run an effective city. Uh, so we want to note that as well. Um, so we, we covered those two areas and then uh, actually to have a heart for the city. Uh, when you are the advocate, the mayor is the advocate for the entire city of Wilmington. And having been born and raised in the city of Wilmington, uh, Wilmington uh, is a major part of who I am. Uh, my parents were born and raised here. Uh, I think it's important to note I had a decision. I had two, two sons born uh, here in the city of Wilmington. We had an opportunity to do what most people do and go out to Christiana Hospital. But no, we stayed right here at St. Francis Hospital. I uh, had the opportunity of uh, Sergeant Ferris's wife delivering my sons. Uh, and so those are actual local residents, local people within the city of Wilmington that have given to the city, uh, just as we have spent our entire life giving to the city. So I have the passion, I have the uh, understanding of Wilmington and have the ability to represent all of Wilmington. As you view today, we had an opportunity and brought some young people on uh, to show that uh, Wilmington has a bright future. Uh, when you look at the young people that are being born and raised in our city, uh, we have a bright future. Yes, there is still more work to do. And so we wanna ensure and we focus on that work uh, that still needs to be done. Uh, being on city council, I had an opportunity to host a program at St. Michael's uh, Nursery, uh, where we had all the in-home daycare providers to actually come out and learn about the STARS program to ensure that our, our children have a happy plate, to ensure that uh, we are tapping into all resources available to uh, enrich and educate our young people based upon the assistance that they could receive from the state of Delaware and to ensure that every in-home daycare has the best quality and is offering that uh, to the best of their ability. So those are a number of things that we've done to ensure that we are uh, impressing upon young people and their importance. We had the opportunity as being an uh, elected member of Wilmington City Council to offer the Martha, Martin Luther King Jr. essay contest. 
Uh, this contest showed the importance of education, uh, which is one of the values that I have within myself, and knowing that it is important to make sure that we can help each young person with a start. Uh, we can't do everything, but we can assist. Uh, also, uh, about being on council, uh, we understood the importance of the STARS program and making sure that every in-home daycare had access to positive uh, outlets, positive information, positive resources to augment the services that they were providing uh, for our young people. So when we think about uh, experience, when we think about knowledge, when we think about uh, having foresight, uh, I, I think I've displayed all of that. I think I have all of that. Uh, and also, uh, I think you, you actually know and see that my heart for Wilmington is here. Uh, it's very prevalent. Uh, had opportunities where if I truly wanted to, I could have left Wilmington just like anybody else. But Wilmington has made me who I am today. And I'm appreciative of every ounce every bit of information that I've learned. I appreciate all the individuals that are imparted in my life, and I just want to be able to do the same uh, by imparting into the lives of other Wilmingtonians. And also, it's important to note that the leadership of Wilmington should reflect the population of Wilmington. When you understand the population of Wilmington, when you have that same heart, that same drive, that same vision, you serve differently. We don't serve above the people, we serve with the people. Uh, and so I think that's important to, to note, and that we are visible and present around the entire city of Wilmington. Uh, I can take you to any part of the city and have a conversation with any number of individuals and actually know the city. Uh, it's not something that I have to be driven around to, something someone has to tell me or guide me because Wilmington is exactly who I am. And so with those uh, same ideologies, those same thoughts, uh, we want to ensure that when you go on Tuesday, September the 15th to make your decision, don't think about uh, uh, the age uh, don't think about uh, any other idiosyncrasies you may have, but think about the actual merits, the actual experience, uh, which will be listed on the screen that we have uh, as we look to be the mayor of the city of Wilmington. Yes, there, there are many doubting Thomases as we have in life, but guess what? You were doubted at one point in your life too, but guess what? You made it. And Wilmington is a success story of people who have been counted out and have made it. And I'm just that same person uh, offering those same uh, honest values and opportunities and have that same light and encouragement to know that I can make it. Uh, we had Carter on today, we had Wash, we had Q Nix on, and those same young gentlemen have dreams and aspirations just like I did, uh, being elected uh, at the age of 24, being sworn in at the age of 25 to Wilmington City Council. So we can do it. Uh, there is a wave in our country, in our nation, uh, where we see that there are responsible young people. Uh, it happens to be a business owner who's been able to employ Wilmingtonians uh, and even to grow our business and also support other businesses within Wilmington to strengthen and ensure that they are maintained and that they are able to provide for those families and their families. So we want to make sure that our dollars stay in Wilmington to the extent that we can, and we've ensured that. Uh, and so it's going to take those type of opportunities to ensure that we're pulled out of this economic uh, uh, pressure and in times that we're in, uh, this downward spiral, and we're going to take uh, the actual opportunity to build those consensus and those relationships to ensure that we are cultivating and strengthening Wilmington. So with those same uh, thoughts on Tuesday, uh, September 15th, I do ask for your support. If you vote prior to then, I ask for your support. Uh, check the box, uh, Justin Wright, Mayor for the City of Wilmington. We do thank you for your time. We do thank you uh, for taking this brief moment just to hear uh, some of the information that I have to say. And uh, again, if you want more information, you can go on justinwright.com by visiting our website. Uh, we can go on all of our social media platforms, Justin for Mayor. Uh, and so like the page, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or even on my personal page, Justin Wright, uh, on uh, Facebook. So we appreciate you for all the support and love that you've shown thus far. It gives us the strength to continue to move forward, continue to fight on, and continue to be the 58th mayor of the city of Wilmington. Thank you.